I mean, this is bombshell after bombshell after bombshell. I actually and literally highlighted every single page. It's just yeah, all I mean, yellow. Exactly. I mean, it's the kind of thing as you read it, um, you know, you and I are old enough to remember Watergate. I mean, this is Watergate over and over again. The idea that this idea that this is a cancer on the presidency and with um, no disrespect at all to the January 6th committee that did an incredible job. Um, what they couldn't get, given that they have far fewer tools than criminal prosecutors, as Tim knows very well, is so much direct evidence where it's conversations with Donald Trump over and over again. And in addition to what you um, just went through, just so many people are telling him there was no fraud that made any difference here. Mike Pence is telling that, his campaign is telling that, lawyers are telling that over and over again. Um, it is useful to remember the reason this is public is because Judge Chutkin denied Donald Trump's people, motion what is all that he, he was making opposing this ever being anything that we could see. Um, he continued to make motions saying no one should ever see this. It was rejected in a written decision by Judge Chutkin today. And that, and she then released this. So that is why we have it over his opposition. And now that we can see it, we know for damn well why it is that he didn't want anyone to see this. In the same way that Richard Nixon didn't mm -hmm. want anyone to see those tapes. Yep, there you have it. You know, January 6th, uh, you know, we had a whole episode last week about January 6th right here on the show. How important it was not to memory hold it. How important it was that we remember we, we fight like the the movie fight like hell is the center of our conversation and what do you know right on schedule my friend jack smith drops his giant 108 page document to judge chuck and judge Cot chuck and remembers her duty and releases it uh out to the public although redacted but it is some shocking stuff in there i mean everything from just how deep donald trump's own hands and feet were involved in the january 6th plan on the events leading up to it he was telling people even before the election, he was going to declare a victory. That was always his plan. He was the one that coordinated the fake elector scheme. He was told, someone on his staff actually told someone, or, uh, uh, somebody from Detroit told them that with all the stuff they were caught, all the all the, all the, uh, the rhetoric they were using was stirring people up in Detroit so much that they expected that it could go to violence. And the campaign representative replied, get them to riot. Get them to riot. So... We know that January 6th was Trump's last great act. And I just want to talk about that a little bit, and then we're going to transition to things. So, what you know, if you remember that movie, Fight Like Hell, we watched a little bit last week. I got another clip I wanted to show you, and then we're going to talk about some really cool stuff. I am recording this show, by the way, right before you see it tonight on the Midas Touch. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Why am I in a hotel room? Why am I recording the show the same night you're going to see it? We'll get all that in. Let's watch this clip. And it kind of tells you, it really gives you good framing of what jack smith was talking about in his in that drop so let's go ahead and add you know add that in a lot of people are like what is all he doing oh he's tweeting i'm not just tweeting the trump legal campaign the legal team where all of our fraud reports have to go to them and we work to help get them affidavits done faster you guys remember this? We're about the to file press a major lawsuit in Georgia. Arizona is a state that we're looking at very, very carefully. Look at we the cloud have a Very, very significant amount of fraud allegations in the state of New Mexico. When I went to bed on election night, he was ahead in all those states, every single one of those states. How is it they all turned around? Every single one of them turned around? Or is it more consistent that there was a plan to turn them around? The Dominion voting systems, the Smartmatic technology software, were created in, Villains, in Venezuela at the direction of Hugo Chavez to make sure he never lost an election. But one of its most characteristic multi-million dollar lawsuit is its ability to flip votes. And this is an elite strike force team that is working on behalf of the president and the campaign to make sure that our constitution is protected. We are a nation of rules, not a nation of rulers. <laughs> We've got Nick Fuentes, Jenna Ellis, Ali Alexander. We have this big press conference with Giuliani, delivered massive proof of systemic fraud, the same fraud nationwide. Can you imagine how pissed off President Trump will be when he gets Look inaugurated? And at all the right people, he'll have a White House full of loyalists. No more games. 
Ooh. No games, no saboteurs, no fakers, no sunshine GOP people. It will turn into the permanent We're gonna revolution. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. That's key. unpack there right i mean who could forget that ridiculous press conference isn't it amazing i mean it, it does remind you the clown show that was the trump defense rudy giuliani now stripped of his license in new york bankrupt being sued by the ladies in georgia jenna ellis i mean yikes that lady she's lost her law license sydney oh my god i mean it's just such a clown show but something key i wanted to talk about and what we're going to transition to the rest of the show for but is about what nick fuente said you know when trump takes power no more of these, you know, spies. He's going to have his people. That, folks, is something we're going to talk about. So this week, instead of talking about just about January 6th, I want to talk about all the stuff that happened around that and after that you may have forgotten. Look, we know that January 6th was Donald Trump's last major act, but we also want to remember the other crazy stuff that happened, too. And then I'm going to talk to you about why I'm sitting here in a vote bet shirt in a hotel in North Carolina talking to you tonight because it's been a fun and exciting day, and I have to show you some fun stuff. So. Let's get right to it. Going to be a fun little show tonight. I hope you can join us. Let's get right to it. I am Fred Wellman. Welcome, welcome, welcome to me, solo in a hotel room by myself. And Matt Parker, my poor, poor, much abused producer, waiting back in St. Louis for me to get this recording done and get it to him so he can enjoy his Friday night. Not to mention Brett and Adam and all the guys at my cell, the my sales bros, the my touch guys who are also waiting for me to get my job done. It is not my fault. It's my fault, actually. <laughs> that's a lie. It's all my fault. But that's okay because you're here and it's great. So let's talk quickly about the other stuff I want to talk about. You know, the big thing I want you to think about this week is what we, we talk about January 6th. We talk about Jack Smith, what happened. But let's talk about the larger picture of the end of the Trump administration because I think a lot of that's been memorable too because the trauma of January 6th and the crazy stuff that went on. And I'm just going to hit some of the key points. We're not going to dwell a long time, but I want you to remember these. So this is goal. Again, my goal with bringing up last week's conversation about um, – January 6th was that don't let them memory hold the crazy stuff. And one of the key things I want you to remember is that Donald Trump 2.0 is going to look a lot like what I will call Donald Trump 1.5. That last few weeks, the few months from November to January 20th of the Trump administration, when all the good people left. And if you remember correctly, they started bringing in a lot of crazy. Here's one I love to focus on a lot. That's Cash Patel. If you remember Cash Patel, you know he was a, he was a nobody working for Lindsey Graham. Then Rose, the super MAGA guy, he's done crazy shit since the, the uh, January 6th. But he went from being obscure staffer for Lindsey Graham to being the deputy chief, the chief of staff, the acting staff, to the secretary of defense. And has talked about at one point of being possibly like the, the deputy AG or DNI at the Intel. I mean, who knows? Cash is going to have a role to play. And how do we know? I mean, let's talk about quickly what this, I mean, the turnover in the Trump administration. Look at these numbers, you guys. This is what they call, this was a study done by a think tank. Uh, and this is the study of turnover. Do you see that far right big bar? 92% total turnover of the Trump team. In their four years, that's the most of any president administration since, well, in memory. I mean, literally all the good people quit from that guy, okay? All of them quit because it was such a bad place to work. He treated people like shit. Only 44, uh, out of the 44 people that served in Trump's administration, a cabinet, deputy cabinet, only four guys 
Only four are endorsing him, saying he should be reelected. All the adults in the room. And if you remember that time, a lot of people did go into the Trump administration who were Republicans, long-time Republicans. I have a very good friend who wanted to be the deputy secretary. He wanted to be actually he was the general counsel of VA, Jim Byrne. And I'll, I'll use his name because he's a good man, a very good man. And Jim was a lifelong Republican who wanted to serve his country. He had the, had the opportunity to serve as the general counsel for the VA. He rose in rank to be the deputy secretary of the VA, a very prestigious position, one well-earned. He's a Marine Corps veteran. He was a Naval Academy grad, worked in the defense, just a fantastic guy. And he got caught in the skullduggery. If you remember the Trump administration VA, there, I think I've mentioned it before, like the, the Trump, the, the Mar-a-Lago three, Ike Perlmutter and two other guys who were golfing buddies of Trump, members of Mar-a-Lago, who were assigned as like an unofficial but real advisory board, the secretary of the VA, whom he reported to illegally, an illegal board of, of advisors, these things. It got really bad at a point where when a young woman wrote a story about being sexually assaulted or sexually harassed in a VA hospital, they actually, Secretary Wilkie, the VA secretary, like the second, second VA secretary they had, Wilkie actually tried to mount an official campaign to discredit this young woman. An option, a former officer, they, they actually wanted their official people to mount a campaign to discredit her. And when Jim objected, they went after him. And ended up having him kicked out and getting fired from the VA. That's the kind of stuff, the skull dogger they wanted. Now, you hear that story. Think about that for a second. The second largest cabinet agency of the United States government was involved in this crazy freaking skullduggery on a daily basis instead of doing their job taking care of veterans this is what secretary wilkie and the staff and the va hackers were dealing with this is backstabbing and unofficial advisors and firing people and that's a great example and that's why we're down to just four people who recommend it. now that thing that nick fuente said about having loyalists if you guys know that's the thing we talk about a lot in project 2025 schedule f now why do we know trump's going to do schedule f you know they're trying to distance themselves from Project 2025 because it's so freaking hated. They want to act like it didn't happen. Well, guess what, folks? It's happening. Why do we know? Why do we know he's going to implement Schedule F the way they can actually fire the uh, employees from the government? Well, right here. They did it. <laughs> okay. October 21st, 2020, right before the election, Donald Trump actually implemented Schedule F for the general service. And Schedule F, if you guys aren't familiar, means they can treat government employees like at-will employees which means they can be fired from anything. Now, the reason we have GS protections, government protections for our federal employees, is so that they're not at the will of the political waves, that they're not bounced around by the waves of who's in charge of that party. They are professionals who stay, talking doctors, scientists, administrative people, people who do the planning for military deployments and operations, people who run military bases permanently for 10, 20, 15 years. We need that expertise in government. And what they want to do is the ability to actually fire people for no more than donating to a Democratic candidate. They're trying to say, well, we're not that's we're not having nothing to do with Project 25. Well, it's bullshit, guys, because we see they already did a magic schedule F. President Biden got rid of it as soon as he took office. But these guys are serious. That's something that Trump did already, and, and it got turned away. The other thing that we feel if you've forgotten, do you remember the fact that the way it works is you're supposed to have a transition, presidential presidential transition as soon as someone wins the election? Well, guess what? The head of the government accountability office, the GAO, said she would not sign the letter that allowed us, or General Service Administration, sorry, GSA. The head of the GSA, I get that wrong a lot, by the way. The head of the GSA refused to sign the order implementing the presidential transition. And what this is, this is an order that goes out to all government agencies saying, hey, you must cooperate with the income administration because they're not in power yet. And they are, they have committees that come in. They have um, bridge organs, like bridge people, like they'll, they'll appoint somebody temporarily to come in and do the handoff in the department for state defense or hell, the White House staff, the national security. This is important stuff. National Security Council, what's working? What crisis is cooking right now? We need to work on these things. So there's a smooth transition to power. GSA refused to do that. They only had transitioned in just the last couple of weeks of January before President Biden took power. That's one of the biggest things. We talk a lot about what the Biden administration had to do, the Biden-Harris administration when they came into power, dealing with the COVID pandemic, dealing with the crashing co economy, millions out of work. On top of that, they didn't get a transition. They had to jump in with both feet and kind of figure it all out. Hopefully we'll have a transition this time and it won't be a Trump transition. But that's another thing we forget about. The idea that Trump refused to order an actual transition of power because you know why? He won the election. Now, another one that we won't we don't want to really forget either is one that's really, really terrible that I never want to forget is Trump's pardons. 
Now, Trump went on a pardon spree. Uh, he, he was pardoning so many people. It was ridiculous. It's easy to forget just how many people he pardoned at the last minute. Um, of course, my friend Mike Flynn's one of them, as you can see. <laughs> Mike Flynn and, of course, uh, uh, Roger Stone got pardons. Uh, let's see who else. Um, gosh. Uh, Judge Jean Pirro's husband got one. Roger Manafort got a pardon. He went on a pardon spree. He used the power of the presidency. The most sacred power they have is pardoning criminals to get all of his friends off the hook and give them breaks. And it was sick. I mean, the stuff they did was monumentally, incredibly scary. Yeah, it's fall. But for me, it's also election season. It is a stressful time. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going a million miles an hour right now. We're just a few weeks from the election. We're a few weeks from, you know, into school. I mean, it is always a crazy time this time of year. And I have to watch after my, stre my stress and I have to watch after my health this time of year. So that's why heart healthy energy is so important to me and an important aspect of my life. Because if I don't stay healthy, if I don't stay energized in this business, I will not survive. You know, pair with a healthy lifestyle, the unique antioxidant compound in Super Beats is clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone, which I try to live, but may not always live up to. Heart health is important to me because, you know, I just hit almost 60. Don't tell anybody. I'm getting that age right now. I've got some, you know, I got some problems with my knees. I got a bad back. So I have to add those things into my lifestyle to help me be more healthy. And I have found, honest to God, that super beat heart shoes actually do help me. I get more energy. I don't get a crash afterwards. It's very health energy. It's all natural. It's plant-based chew. There's no stimulants and there's no artificial sweeteners, but it tastes great anyway. So I do actually take, I do use super beats heart shoes every single day. Day, and they really help me out a lot. Now, here's the good news for you. You can get them too. You can double your potential with Super Beats Heart Shoes. Now get a free 30-day supply of Super Beats Heart Shoes on all bundles, and you get 15% off your first order by going to getsuperbeats.com and using code FRED. Yep, my name. Super easy. Though that, that place for that is again get superbeats, B-E-T-S dot com, code FRED. Get superbeats.com today. They're great. I use them. They help me with my energy and keep me going so I can be here for you every week and keep telling the story of our democracy. And there's a picture out there I could find. I was going to look for it on my computer, but there's a picture out there of Roger Stone and, and Mike Flynn hanging out together at, uh, at the Trump Hotel, holding up their pardons uh from trump that day it's 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 kind of sick to look at i'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> you know and so that's the kind of thing he pardoned everybody and everyone there's rumors there was money involved people got paid to pitch just trump there's usually a process for pardons trump ignored all of that he just said hey this guy wants a pardon he wrote a pardon and it's just incredible another thing he did that i thought was disgusting and i'll never forgive him for of course is the presidential medal of freedom the medal of freedom now the medal of freedom he himself has said that it's one of the most important medals it's more important than congressional medal of honor because people are living you know those guys who get the medal of honor they get blown up they're hurt a lot of times they're dead but the people who get the medal of freedom why why they're healthy and strong do you guys know that donald trump gave him to jim jordan Jim Jordan got a Medal of Freedom. And of course, Devin Nunez, who would go on to be the CEO of Truth Social, that's what he left for. He gave it to his friends. And what's really fascinating, as you guys, is I went out to find pictures of these ceremonies. I couldn't find pictures of Jordan and Nunez. Literally, there's no personal pictures online, social media, Facebook, nothing. No official photos for the Trump White House. They did the ceremonies completely in secret with no pictures. I mean, nothing says an honor like getting a presidential medal of freedom without even having a ceremony to do it. But that's who these guys were. One of his final acts, and one of the most disgusting ones I want to tell you about too, is if you remember, he skipped the inauguration. How significant was that? Look at this number, you guys. It was the first time in 150 years that the outgoing president skipped the inauguration for her successor. That's Donald Trump in a nutshell, isn't it? Too petty and narcissistic to even attend and sit in the stands to the transition of power to his successor. I mean, my God, Michelle and Barack sit in that stands and gave it to Donald F and Trump. And yet this little petty old man ran away and wouldn't do it. And it just goes to show you just what kind of a person he really is and just kind of how petty he is. You know, I could go on and on about this. $2 billion for Jared Kushner from the Saudi Arabian monarchy, the same people that he helped out when Amon Khashoggi got killed. The same people that was the very first foreign trip for Donald Trump was Saudi Arabia. Well, they gave $2 billion to Jared as well. On and on, more and more. And it really just shows you 
the rot that was the Trump administration. And we for, I think we forget it sometimes. We forget just how rotten that administration was and how bad it was. And of course, I'm not here for that, right? We're going to tell you the truth here at non-democracy and I tell you the truth. So what are we doing about it? Well, that takes us today. One, we're 32 days from the election, you guys. 32 days is all that's left, right? So we've got to get the work in. You know, I told you before, and you're sick of hearing it, there's only three to 4% undecided at this point. Uh, and, and that means most people made their minds. So now we're in a game of getting out the vote. That's all of you guys who are watching the show on a Friday night, getting out there, telling your friends and neighbors, getting your family members to vote, registering those who aren't voting who aren't registered to vote before it's too late. Deadlines are coming up. It's October, folks. Check your state's deadline. There's, there's deadlines coming up. Get registered. Make sure you are registered. Uh, one of the organizations I'm involved with, Be Heard Pack, and right now we're sending out um, we're sending out texts out to everyone uh, in Pennsylvania and Georgia saying, "Hey, if you've been removed from the rolls, make sure that you are out there. You, you're checking on your uh, you're checking on your re registration status. You don't want to find out on election day you can't vote. So we definitely want to check those. Make sure that you've checked your registration and get out there. But most important, that is the most important thing. So what am I doing? Why am I talking to you from a hotel in North Carolina? <laughs> Well, I just left the Trump rally. Well, not exactly the Trump rally. We actually left the the, the grounds of the Trump rally. <laughs> we were uh, we I'm I'm traveling the country right now with Vote Vets. If you know Vote Vets, great organization. I'm very proud to be a part of. And Vote Vets is out and about right now. We are on a bus tour right now, going around the country uh, and stalking JD Vance and stalking Michael, uh, our friend Donald J. Trump. And uh, well, let me show you a little clip. We started off in New York City. Right there in times where, as you can see, it's a very subtle bus. It says, I'm a veteran, not a sucker or a loser on the side of it. And the other side of it says, Veterans Against Trump. We took that to uh, right, to, right to New York, where, where uh, J.D. Vance was having his debate uh, that night. Here we are right in front of the uh, debate. Uh, that's me speaking in front of the bus. That's where the debate was held uh, uh, at CVS Studios. Uh, we had to stop by and visit, of course, the Trump Hotel. Where else could we go? <laughs> On our way south, we stopped by D.C. Got some pictures right here in front of the Capitol and elsewhere. It's been a heck of a trip. Uh, we made our way down to uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, yesterday, where J.D. Vance was having a fundraiser in, in town. And we managed to make ourselves comfortable on the side of the road as he went by and produced my friend Mike Levine, who's with Vote Vets as well. He filmed this epic video. That's J.D. Vance's uh, convoy going by with us on the side of the road waving fiercely, and I did not flip him off. I'm a professional. <laughs> we also went down today. Uh, I got to find the clip. We uh, we made our way down to Fayetteville, North Carolina, where we had a rally with uh, supporters of vote vets, and then went out and then did a drive by the Trump caravan, the Trump uh, the Trump site for the Trump. Uh, town hall that he had today uh we went to say hi and drove by kind of a similar thing and we're gonna be making our way around the country for the next uh, all the way till october 12th or longer depending on how it goes reaching out to veterans reach out to military families and folks who support vote vets and others and reminding them of the terrible things that donald trump said about our veterans he has said over and over that he, uh, terrible things from the earliest days. I can't forget the day he sat there on stage at a Christian conference and said that when they asked about John McCain, he says, you know, John McCain's only a hero because he was captured. I like people who weren't captured. His exact words on video. People like to deny he said the suckers and losers comment to General Kelly. General Kelly has confirmed on the record that in a private conversation, Donald Trump said that he couldn't understand why we served. He always felt like it was suckers that went in the army and losers that got killed. Those are facts. Those are things he said. So no matter how much MAGA wants to deny it, it's on the record. I'm going to believe John Kelly, the four star over Donald Trump any day. And there's many more. Uh, his behavior around gold star families. I don't know if not of you know, do you know that one of Donald Trump's very first acts as president, his first act really as commander in chief, was he authorized a seal raid into Yemen that Obama had actually said no to. 
And the SEALs flew into Yemen in their special operations Ospreys. One Osprey got shot down. One Navy SEAL was killed. And nine children got killed in the raid, including one who was an American citizen. And when the SEAL's dad met Trump at Dover, when Trump showed up at Dover, the audacity showed up at Dover, the SEAL's dad chewed his ass. You know what Trump did? He stopped going to Dover for two years. So when they give Biden shit about Dover after the Afghanistan thing, when he briefly looked at Bo's, the Bo's, um, his, uh, his beads on his wrist, his rosary, excuse me, his rosary, the long day. Um, remember that Donald Trump skipped, skipped over for two years because somebody had the audacity to yell at him for getting his kid killed in an, a raid that should never have gone. That's Donald Trump. That's what he thinks about our service. That's what we think about troops. Just tonight, as we were driving here away, we drove away from Fayetteville after the, after the rally started, no point in being there. He actually got up in front of the audience there at Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is now Camp or Fort Liberty, and said the first act he's going to do as president is rename those bases with their Confederate names, Fort Bragg. You know, General Bragg uh, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the Confederacy wasn't well-liked, okay? <laughs> But it's one of our most famous bases, or was, because the 18th, uh, 18th Airborne Corps there is the 82nd Airborne. It's now Fort Liberty, a name that was chosen by the local people. And he wants to immediately turn back and honor traitors to our country, which is appropriate because Donald Trump is also a traitor to our country. So that's why I'm on the road. I'm really proud to be a part of this movement. Uh, uh, and they called me up and said, hey, you want to join us? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm coming. So I am I'm the commodore of that pirate ship that's driving around. <laughs> I'm very proud to be the commodore of the private ship that's driving around. I hope you see us on the road. Uh, we'll be making our way up to probably Philadelphia this weekend on Sunday. And then we'll figure out next week as we figure out where Trump and Vance and others are going. Or just go around and have some events on our own rallies. So pay attention. If you don't follow, uh, if you don't follow Vote Vets, I'd, I'd love you to follow Vote Vets. They've got um, all their social media channels are at vote bets um we've been posting the videos we take up on twitter posting my likes on twitter you can follow me as always remember to follow me on at fp wellman uh, if you want to learn more about that movie i talked about at the beginning that's fight like hell movie.com it's an incredible movie ties directly into the the drop from jack smith i really recommend you watch it i can't I can't recommend it enough. It's very, very powerful. It's right on YouTube. You can watch it for free. You don't need to worry about it. And one last mention of a film, by the way, is War Game. The movie War Game is now available online on Apple TV. We just got word in the way here that it's, it's certified as one of the top movies on, on Apple. They got an award from Apple for being such a good movie. It's a documentary that follows an actual war game that I participated in as the bad guy. I played sort of the Steve Bannon, Mike Flynn guy as the bad guy, mostly doing their social media contract. And then you'll see me briefly on screen a couple of times. And the movie is gutting. And the, basically we, we portray a war game of a second January 6th sort of event. But this time, some of our military actually participates. It's put on by the Veterans Voice Foundation, which is a part of uh, of Boat Vets, my organization I work with as well. And it's pretty powerful. It's available right now on Apple TV for free nationwide. You can watch it now. I really highly recommend that as well, man. So that's a lot going on in a short time. I wanted to tell you, I didn't want to miss a week, uh, miss you guys. So I cranked this out in this beautiful holiday in, uh, which means I'm smarter. It's a holiday express. So I'll be smarter tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if the show will be better, but here we are. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in and short notice. Welcome, as always. The Midas Mighty are powerful, powerful people, as well as those of you who follow On Democracy, our pod. You can always follow us on Twitter or go to the On Democracy podcast uh, on, on our YouTube channel. We'd love to have you remember to like, subscribe, share, say hi. I'll watch this later tonight with you guys while I'm up eating dinner at midnight, probably. <laughs> so join me, join us, keep up the fight. Like I said, guys, it's 32 days left. 32 days left. It's, it's in, we're still in the fight. We're almost there. This is almost over. We do this right. We get all the Democrats we can get to vote. We put Donald Trump behind us forever. And how cool will that be? So with that, great conversation. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me as much as I hang out, love hanging out with you guys. Sorry it's so late. We will see you next week, probably for the road again. Maybe some cool new footage to offer. In the meantime, keep up the fight. Save our democracy. I'll see you next week.